Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Welcome to our meditation on Daily Fountain, a study guide of the Church of Nigeria and Can Communion. Father, we thank you when you have called us to feed from your word. Help us to understand it and be your very best. In Jesus' name we pray. Brethren, as you're watching this, we're going to call in your children because this topic today concerns children very much. Call you to please bring your children in to sit with you to watch this program and thereafter discuss it with them. It will help your family when they grow up and when you grow older. Praise the Lord. Our topic today is wise children. Wise children. The text is taken from Proverbs chapter 23, verses 22 to 26. Let me read it for us. Listen to your father who begot you, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy the truth, and do not sell it. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice. And he who begets a wise child will delight in him. Let your father and your mother be glad. And her who bore you rejoice. My son, give me your heart. Let your eyes observe my ways. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our focus today is the attitude of children to their parents, especially when they have become old. What's the attitude to your parents when they have become old? Some of you have your parents in the villages. Maybe have a kind enough to bring them once in a while to give them medical attention or some social concern. Of course, they should live in their own house anyway. So I don't come and run, run your house for you. But you must visit them, you must call them, you must listen to them. And it's very, very important. It says that we must listen to our, to our, to our parents. That's what in verse 22 says. Listen to your parents who begot you. And do not despise your mother when she's old. This passage sheds light on what God expects children in relating to their parents. It shows the type of behavior which children should exhibit in Christian homes. Children who are properly brought up as believers from the cradle. That's the kind of behavior that they show to their parents when they are old. Of course, wise children, that's those who are born again, those are the wise ones. They have bought knowledge and wisdom from the Lord. They listen to their parents. And will in no account despise their parents. If you are despising your parents, today, ask the Lord to forgive you. Turn you around to go back to that old man or that old woman and make a reconciliation with, with him or her. Very, very key. That's story. But I know that bad children, these are unbelieving children, that some of us, some of them could despise their parents for a number of reasons. We can look at some reasons why some children despise their parents. One, that parents have become very old and weak. Of course, old age comes with weakness. And they, don't, they tend not to be useful to them anymore because they have made it, they can run on their own, and they, they think those ones are too old, those ones are of no use anymore, and so they despise them. And this is a time when parents need their children more. And this natural duty to parents is strengthened by God's divine command to children that we must listen to and obey our parents. If God spares us, 
we also want to become old. Is that not so? You don't want the children to abandon you at that point in time. You see, that's where I love female children. The young man will come in and greet daddy, how are you? Mommy, how are you? Maybe bring some, buy some goods and bring his car or give him some money. And he has three days to, to stay. He has a list of things to do when he's back home. And you hardly see him. You see him in the morning when he takes breakfast, comes back at night to take supper, maybe at 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock. And in a short time, he want to sleep. No time to talk. But the female child will come back. He will sit down. I said, Daddy, this your room is not smelling right. It's not smelling right. She will look around, pick up the old clothes, the, the dirty clothes there, wash them, scrub the floor, clean up the place. When she comes, they come to the room next day, the, the room will smell nice. The, the girl children are wonderful. These are ones that spend time with their mother in the kitchen, see what they're cooking, how they're getting on, and see what they need because they are available to them. But some boys are never, never available to their parents. Children, learn to be available to your parents. When you plan to go home and leave, reduce your list of those you want to see. Let them come and see you in the house. Spend time with your father. One man traveled to Lagos to talk with his son. The boy that avoided him. You have to talk with him. And that can be very, very heartbreaking. What do you do with your father? Do you despise him because he's old and you're not, make, you're not making money? You're not independent? And the, and, and the man is no longer useful to you. Or maybe some, despite their parents, their parents may have some deformity or the other. And their children tend to be ashamed of presenting their parents because they are weakness in public. But you see, these parents are the ones that clean them up from credo with those weaknesses that they have. They clean them up, support them as they were growing up. They are giving you the best education but they supported you when you were the weakest. And when they become weak, they expect you to also support them. That is God's instruction. That is what you have here in the scriptures, in Proverbs chapter 23, 22, 26. That children should listen to and support their parents who gave birth to them. And so maybe some, may think, some unbelieving children may think because their parents are not educated, not as exposed as they, as, they, as they are, and so they are ashamed of introducing these illiterate parents. But they are your parents. And you can brush them up as much as you can to the glory of God. The truth remains that some of us, there are some parents who, who our parents are better than. Some of our parents, or some people, our parents are better than them. But we tend to despise our own because of one weakness or the other. Other parents have weaknesses. But some of them honor their parents and fulfill, make them live fulfilled lives. You can do that to your own parents, to the glory of God, in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, but a wise child will support, will push his parents up, accept those parts that they cannot change, and make them the best that they can have. And it's very important that we give our parents the best support that we can give to them. And it makes them happy, makes them live longer life. People say that, uh, when people say that they live long, it's because they have people who take care of them in old age. Take care of your parents in their old age. So your children will take care of you in your old age. If you want to take care of them, repent. Repent. Let the Lord teach you how to deal with your parents. But, but why children know that it's better? To support these parents, to gladden their hearts, and make their parents be glad that they had them. It doesn't matter what they look like. I recall a song that women sometimes sing during modern Sunday. They say that their mother, their mother, whether it is beautiful or ugly, is their mother. And it is, it is true. You can't change mother. It is your mother. She gave back to you. She wind you. And it's your father. You can't change it, no matter how bad his character may be. But God can help you to lead him to Christ if he's not born again. And you can see a change in the life of the man. Uh, here he says, the phrase, hacking unto your father who begot you, refers to the fact that the father gave birth to you 
had authority over you, had showed affection to you. If you threw you away when you were two months old, you, you, you will not be there. Unless somebody picks you up and, and, and cleans you up. And that becomes your real parents anyway. So we find that the, the fact that he gave back to us, or he picked us from, from where the, the, the way what parents dropped you, makes you a different person that, that had received, aff received affection from your parents. And therefore, had they have authority over you, which we must always uh, respect. Again, we find that old, by years, older people have garnered a lot of experience. They may not be as exposed as we are, but have ex experience not something you learn in school, something you garner as you journey through life. We have garnered so much experience that when they talk to us, we should listen. As we listen, we can then communicate our own views in humility, and we can find that we can get to a convenient point where our views will be balanced between us and the parents without causing them pain. Praise the Lord. It is when you differ with the opinion with your father or with your mother. People have grown up once, maybe in the issue of what cause to do or who to marry. They must learn to communicate with humility to our parents. Good parents will be sensitive to the good views of their children. One man the leader of the community says that if the family had agreed on something, later the young people brought, bring in better ideas. He would choose their better idea of children and go and convince the elders that these children are saying the right thing. If your son or daughter has a better idea, buy it. It's, it, it, it's not, it idea is not gained all through by age. Sometimes by exposure, you can gain some experiences. Some children have also turned against their parents because they want independence. Not because of anything, because they want independence. They want to be free. And so they don't want to obey their parents. And sometimes this independence that they want uh, are, are to do sinful and filthy things, which they know their parents will not approve of. So they want independence, so they can live a life uh, of freedom. Our parents are concerned because their, their seed should produce good results. That's why they talk to us. That's why they try to uh, make us see it the way they are seeing it. We ought to give reverence to our parents in the flesh. When we reverence our parents in the flesh, we have to understand how we also reverence uh, our, 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 our Father in heaven. Because this man gave back to us and we reverence him as a father figure. And also there's a father figure in heaven who we also must, must understand and obey. Brethren, caring and useful children are more of those who know the Lord and obey the word of God. In the passage we read, in verse 24 it says, The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice. He who begets a wild child will delight in him. Father of the righteous. If your child is righteous, you are father of the righteous. If your child is born again, if your child knows the Lord, he will listen to you. He will, he will even impact on you the way you will be surprised because the Spirit of God will be walking through him. So children, know the Lord. Obey your parents. Listen to them. When you differ in your opinion, share your thoughts with them in humility. Your father in heaven is concerned about the way you treat your father on earth. So when we, because when we know the Lord, he brings joy to those around him. Definitely when one is born again, he brings joy to those around him. He's not only in heaven. See, there's joy in heaven for one sinner who repents. But for those around us, there are a lot of joy when we know the Lord. Children who are despised their parents, please. Repent. Let the Lord speak to you. Turn around. Give your life to Christ. Let the Holy Spirit guide you so that you can become a source of blessing to your own parents. Brethren, it is a thing of joy to have a righteous son, a righteous daughter. It's a thing of joy to have a child who knows the Lord. So this passage we're talking today, 
parents must bear it in mind so that they can train their children up in the way of the Lord, the way they should go. It, it, what the children be, became later sometimes is a result of what we give them as children when they are small. What kind of training do we give them? How do we bring them up? Because that, that pre preparish, preparation ground determines what they become and how they behave in future. Train up your child in the way of the Lord. When he's grown up, he will not depart from it. God is therefore challenging both parents and children to have good relationship. Parents have a critical role in bringing up their children, starting from the candle. And children have a, a, divine, a divine role, divine injunction of listening to their parents and loving them, especially in their old age, to make them happy. It is a clear thing that we will live a happier life in old age with their children are not doing well, not doing well in terms of bringing money. Bringing money is part of it, but doing well in terms of having good reputation in society. People don't talk evil of them. And they come back and they, and, and they, and, and they bring joy to the, to the parents. May the Lord help you as a child. Be wise. Receive the Lord. That is wisdom. Become righteous and their life will become a source of blessing to your parents. It will be so to you when their children grow up to the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.